Greetings, greetings, greetings. Welcome to Real Talk with Lisa. It's so good to be here with you, isn't it? I am so excited. Today is one of those days that, by the way, it's almost end of January. And today I have an incredible guest, uh, not only an acquaintance, but a friend, someone who's a leader, um, someone I think a lot of women, young girls would aspire to be. Oh, uh, yes. So with no further ado, I would love to introduce my guest, Yasmin Beers. Um, our, my God, <laughs> let's start with your title. She is the city manager to city of Glendale. Big city. Yeah. So welcome, Yasmin John. Thank you, very much. Thank you very much for having me. And you said end of January, and I'll say Happy New Year. Why not? One more time for, for this month before oh. we kind of move Close into the month of February. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> I'm laughing because uh, uh, I have my dog in the room today, in the office today. So I put him outside. And uh, so if you hear any barking or anything like that, I can Actually. hypnotize you. I can <laughs> hypnotize you right here, right now, so you won't hear that. Yasmin John. Yes. Um, I, let's get to it. Okay. You are here. You're a working mom, girl. Yes. Mom of two? Two kids, yes. Uh, Sophia, who is 12, and Bijan, who's 14. And a half, he'll say. 14 and a half. <laughs> yes, <laughs> they always correct us. Correct. Right? So, how is being a city manager, being a mom, being a community leader, how do you juggle, girl? Uh, honestly, I, I sometimes wonder myself. Um, it's, it's different on a daily basis, but I mm. think that juggling act doesn't happen without the support of my family. Um, my husband, first and foremost, and my extended family, my mom, my dad, my sister, and um, very close friends who are always there in case um, we need that support. So that juggling, again, depending on the week, I, I know like Sunday nights we sit down and think about uh, what's happening with the kids this week, who's doing what, um, who's on first base, who's on second base. And who's going to be able to kind of wrap this all up by the end of the week. And we figure it out. Some weeks are more stressful than others in terms of truly being that mom and being a professional. Um, and you want to do both extremely well. Mm. Um, which at times can be very challenging. Uh, pulling at your heartstrings, not knowing uh, if you're doing it quite right, especially the mom piece. But you know what? At the end of the day, I've always been a working mom. Um, I've always been in, in the, you know, kind of professional life. So I don't know anything different than that. And we just kind of make it happen. We make it work. You make it work. So in a way, um, it's a team effort. Absolutely. Yeah. Team effort. Team effort. Like all, a corporation. Yeah. All <laughs> the way through. Okay. It absolutely is. Do you cook? I cook. I love to cook. And I think the reason why I love to cook is because I have the opportunity to start something and complete it. And I, and I love to see that completed product. And I love to see the faces, whether it's family or friends or whoever it is, my kids eating the food, hopefully they've enjoyed it. And it's, it's kind of, it's that pleasure of, okay, um, I've seen this all the way through because oftentimes, based on the type of work that we do, it takes a long time to possibly get to the end result. And I think um, to see that kind of, um, satisfaction and gratification instantly by cooking or for some people it's gardening or whatever right. it may be you get your hands dirty you get something done and people enjoy it it's, it's very so rewarding is cooking for you like <laughs> I, I want to call it hypnotic I don't know why I'm doing yeah. this instead of cooking it could, cooking can be this way it's, it's a zone it's a there's zone. music going there's you know food. so it's your me time it's me family time. time kids come they'll taste you know the house smells good of course if there's there's wonderful feelings of cooking and also you know my mom is a great cook and I and I you know tribute all of the skills of just you know kind of learning to throw a little bit of this and that to her so it's it's wonderful wonderful so being a leader what does being a leader really mean 
leader of the house, but it's like you're managing a big city. It's not a small little community. Sure. Uh, you know, I, I think uh, there are pieces of being a leader that are very innate uh, in, in people. Um, you either are born with it and have certain qualities and characteristics that a good leader, I think, should have. Um, a good leader is able to lead people. People will follow leaders. Mm. You don't necessarily have to tell folks to do certain things. That's, you steer them. You steer them. You guide them. You communicate with them. You make them feel like they are part of that process. You listen. Um, that listening piece, that communication piece, especially now, um, more so than ever before, that ability to be able to kind of hear from, from folks within the organization, from within the community, um, making sure that folks are being heard is something that I think um, is very important and it's important for us to be cognizant of that. Um, and that's, you know, whether it's a small organization, a large organization, um, the ingredients are the same, right? Uh, it just depends on, you know, what your um, style is and how do you navigate um, through difficult times, through times that aren't so difficult, um, there's lots of pieces to it, but I, I, I guess it's years of experience. Um, for me, being part of the organization within the city of Glendale for 33 plus years. That's right. You started. You started. I mean, uh, I know we we go a long way. Yes. I've known you for a long time. So you, where did you start from? What, what, what does your story start from? The story you didn't start as a manager yeah. or a leader, so I started please as share a, with. Sure. Yeah. Sorry. Um, I started as a library page, um, shelving books at Grandview Branch Library here in Glendale. Oh, the, so it's not this one? No, not this. The okay. one across the street. It's the one that is on the west side of town. Right. And um, shelving books at three dollars and seventy-five cents an hour in 1987. Um, and the rest is history. So while I was in high school for probably six months at that time, ending high school, and then started um, going to college, Cal State Northridge, I had that part-time job and had the part-time job at the Glendale Libraries while I went to school. Got my bachelor's degree, ended up getting a full-time job at the library, um, and then promoted within the library, ultimately overseeing their budget, personnel, capital improvement projects, and then I was across the street at the main library. Yeah. Oh, okay. And then became the um, deputy city manager in the year 2000 when that position became available. And I thought, honestly, let me just get my name out there because I'm interested in, in moving from the library. I'm a generalist. I'm not um, trained to be a librarian. Um, and so as a generalist in the public kind of administration. I don't know the difference. What's a generalist? I'm public administration. Okay. Right. <laughs> and so you can work in any department, okay. really, um, within the management ranks or analyst ranks to, to do the work. Wonderful. And so deputy city manager, and then almost 20 years now, 20 plus years in the city manager's office. Beautiful. Um, yeah, in, in that arena. And I knew in, in middle school I wanted to be um, in the public sector. Okay. I, I knew in middle school. Now, did I exactly know what? So your dream and aspirations was not to be a leader of a city, but you wanted to okay. give back to my community. Beautiful. Service. Um, service is always at the core of um, what I've done professionally, what I've done in terms of volunteer work. Mm -hmm. um, and you have been a leader in many organizations. Okay. That's been a part. I'm going to open the door for a question. I was just going to say. Mind? Not at all. Come on, Winston. <laughs> And here's Winston. All right. <laughs> Good. Now we're going to stop this. All right. So thank you for doing this. And uh, when we are thinking about outside of the box, mm -hmm. are you a um, more organized person or are you creative thinking outside of the box? What can we do that makes changes, becomes better? Mm -hmm. So personality-wise, yeah. I'm more of a, uh, you know, you do personality tests throughout your career. Of course. And um, the most recent one we did was colors. 
Oh. And it ended up being an orange. And so it's the visionary, it's outside the box, it's yes we can, and pointing to it and saying that's what we're gonna do, but I have folks on my team, which is very important, mm. who are not all orange, right? They are very technical, they're very analytic, who will tell me, okay, great, you wanna do that, but we have to go through all of these steps to get there. Or they'll tell me there's absolutely no way we can get there now based on some of the scenarios that may be at hand and so as i it's funny i had a meeting with with all of our managers last week and we do it on a quarterly basis and it's you know 200 plus people and i told them i said we work so hard we're always on a treadmill we're always running um we are looking at the next council meeting and being ready for it and we don't have time to dream Mm. And that dreaming piece, no, no matter whether you're, you know, this person who thinks outside of the box or not, that dreaming piece, I think that time alone, that quiet time where you're not, you know, waiting for that next report to come in or analyzing something, that dreaming piece, I think, is what is so important in any organization, in any, in any profession, and personally or professionally, really. To dream allows you to do things that maybe you thought weren't possible. Um, I think it is so, you mean so important. Like dream and sit and hover over and see what can what can be done, yeah. and then and then talk to your colleagues about it and brainstorm and throw some things on the whiteboard. Uh, you know, yeah, <laughs> and and sticking. I love sticky notes. You know, sticky yeah. notes and and think about things and and that progression, that movement um keeps kind of your um light on and your spark and your tenacity going because at times when it's the same work or oh, the know. same um types of projects it might become mundane for anybody no matter what you do exactly um so to keep that spark alive i said you know allow yourself 15 minutes half an hour a week to dream and jot it down. You may come to it a year from now, you may never come to it, but you may come to it and something great may happen. You never know. <laughs> you never know. So is your daughter looking at you and saying, mom, how do you do all this? Or does your daughter, because you know, a part of my nonprofit is for motherless children. Mm -hmm. So when there are working moms, that are so busy it's like some children are become latchkey children mm -hmm. um how can we empower some of our ladies mm -hmm. uh how can you give a, a, a nugget uh, for them how to manage how to juggle so that they're not only they're not overwhelmed but how do they manage what's your wisdom I, you know again it, it differs from week to week but yeah. prioritizing your weeks prioritizing what needs to happen on a given day sometimes i can't i cannot um it sometimes it feels as though it's so overwhelming for mm. that moment where you can't take that next step forward and then what do you do i take a breath and then i take the step forward because that's what you do you wake up in the morning, you drink your coffee, and guess what? The kids are gonna go to school and you're gonna go to work and you're gonna make a difference and it feels good. Sometimes it doesn't feel good because you don't feel like you're you know, right. providing what you need to provide or whatever the case may be. But at the end of the day, putting that one foot in front of the other, taking a breath, asking for help when necessary. Asking um, for help when okay. necessary. It's okay to ask for yeah. that help. You, none of us can do it alone. No one is a Wonder Woman or a Superman. And there is only so much we can do in life that usually I say, if it's not, if, if when we do over and over and we are not giving ourselves a break, the body will shut us down. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. The body will say enough is enough whether it's the headache that comes on or the backache or whatever the case yeah. may be, the body will tell you when enough is enough, when you haven't taken a little bit of time for yourself. 
I had the opportunity to speak to the character and ethics leadership right. um, group last week. Lovely juniors and seniors, mm. and so profound in terms of um, a lot of the things that that they were talking about. Um, and and I got to speak with them for about a half an hour. And honestly, for the ability to be able to um, take that time for yourself in the midst of what all of these young folks are doing today with 4.0. I know 4. the millennials are just, yeah, GPAs and they've started nonprofits as high right. schoolers. They volunteer X number of hours. They're in sports. But if they don't take that time for themselves, whatever it is that they need to do to decompress, right. quiet time. Um, you know, it, it's overwhelming for them as well. And um, it, it was amazing sitting down and talking with, with some of them. And uh, the importance, I think, of this generation, especially, you know, my kids growing up and, and beyond, is um, they all have a sense of, of community. They have a sense of wanting to belong. They have a sense of wanting to be heard. And I think they also have a sense of um, the importance of platforms, mm -hmm. meaning, meaning any sort of, you know, you and I are having a conversation, you have a platform that you do in terms of communicating with folks, right. and how do you utilize that time in a manner that's productive, that's necessary, that's not wasted, Correct. that somebody, if they get a little nugget out of it, then it's not wasted, and that's huge, that's huge. So the millennial, and where do you see the next generation? What do you see our city becoming? Is it becoming more millennial? Because we have a lot of uh, condos and apartments sure. and everything. <clears throat> so do you see more fast uh, yuppies coming and <laughs> the millennials coming and the seniors are going up into the hills? Not necessarily. Okay. I think what you see, <laughs> you know, I... It, it all depends. The demographics of our downtown has clearly changed in the last right. 10 years. Yeah. Um, I think there is a level of hustle and bustle uh, here in Glendale that you didn't have 15 years ago. There's a level of energy and vibe. Mm. Um, putting aside whether folks like the architecture of some of the buildings that have gone up, putting all of that aside, because okay. there's different opinions about right what downtown looks like. And I mean, downtown means central brand and all that. And I respect our all downtown. that. Yes, okay. Our downtown to me is Glendale. Downtown. Glendale downtown. I don't mean any other city. I mean, is there any right. other city around us? No, it's Glendale. So to me, um, that vibe, that vibrancy, that economic engine, I think that's necessary for a city that's fourth largest city in LA County yes. to be productive, to be energized, to be successful, to have the ability to provide the myriad of services that we provide um, here in Glendale is a component, mm. a, another, you know, it's funny, we keep going back to cooking, another <laughs> ingredient, <laughs> I, I keep thinking of you doing this, another ingredient that I see. Stirring the pot. Yeah, that ingredient that's necessary to be a successful um, city. Uh, so uh, I think there's a different vibe. Do I think it's only one kind of demographic that's now that hustle and bustle in downtown Glendale? No. no. I well, we're not the bedroom community anymore. No, clearly we're not. Clearly we're not. Right. But even when we were the bedroom community, this is one thing that most people don't know about me. 25 years ago, we used to have in cahoots. <laughs> we used to have wet teacher contests. We used to have Chippendales. You know, but that was bedroom community. Now it's a whole different. So with the women, um, do we see a new trend of more women workers? Uh, we go to the banks. There are more women in the banking world in managerial positions and everything. So I think we are seeing more women leaders and the, the younger. Mm -hmm. I, I think so. I yeah. think the more and more women see them, see others first and foremost. And then they have the ability to see themselves in any role that, that they may want to aspire to. Interestingly, when I became city manager, a whole lot of conversation surrounded the fact that I'm the first city manager that's female. 
Oh, that's right. And initially, right, okay. yes, I forgot. That's okay. And We're so used to it being you down. Yeah. Initially, I was like, ah, why? What's the big deal? It's sure right. I'm female. I have the same qualifications as my male counterpart. Why exactly. do we have to highlight it? Exactly. But when I um, stopped for a second and thought about it and took a breath, it's not about me being the first female city manager. It's about what the role has been and what it represents to other females. And when I have this conversation with my kids, interestingly, my daughter had a very similar reaction to me saying, well, what's the big deal? A female can do whatever it is that they want to do. And she's yeah. absolutely right. You can do whatever it is you want to do in this world, in this life. My son, though, who's the 14-year-old, the, the older, um, said, no, Sophia, you have to realize the importance of what this signifies to women. She saw it as, as a female, she saw it as, I can, I can do, do it. I can do it, which is fantastic. Of course. But that's also um, upbringing. It's what she's exposed to, but not everyone has the opportunity to have that exposure. And so for those who may not have that exposure, um, who, you know, may have that opportunity to see somebody in a role that they didn't necessarily think of, think a female um, could have, you know, they can see a female in that. And I think you see that more and more. Um, and, and so it's, it's very healthy and it's very exciting. So the opportunities are there. If you dream it, you want it, go after it. Absolutely. Thank you. Absolutely. One should, I, 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 that's one of the things I talk to all my clients, especially the young teens, sure. when they say, but I'm an introvert. And I say, you can be an introvert and be a go-getter. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Right? Because having the confidence to do a project, to do a job, to be a leader, and then you come home and you go into your home cocoon and I'm an introvert, and yet most people see me as an extrovert because you I can not an introvert. <laughs> I like to call myself. I like to do a lot of things, <laughs> but I pick and choose where I am, sure. what I do, and then I love my me time and my cocoon time. Right. That's Science. where you get your energy, right? Oh yeah. You have I to energize when I am in silent mode. I'm not constantly speaking. Even sometimes in my home or even office, there is absolutely no sounds, no background, no radio, nothing happening because silence to me. So what gives you energy other than cooking? <laughs> People give me energy. So as much as I'm an extrovert and as much as I um, really get my energy from people. Um, I too need to recharge. Mm. Um, and my recharge is when the door opens into my home and I walk in and I'm with my family and whatever that means, right. whether it's watching a, a movie and having hot cocoa, um, or it's reading a book or it's sitting in silence or it's listening to music or it's cooking, whatever that is, uh, is the recharge for me that I have to have. And I will go, 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 go with people. Um, but we all need a little bit of recharge. And for me, it's just once that door opens and I close it for a period of time and just to, to decompress a little bit. Beautiful. What books or who has been the biggest influence in your life or career? Biggest influence for my career? That is- For life, um, but I like to have your career. Sure, too. yeah. A number of touch points, I think, for me in terms of inf influencers in, in my life. Um, a number of people I have worked with uh, here in the city of Glendale have influenced me um, in a in a positive manner to know like being a guide uh, being a guide yes to a certain extent but also knowing what 
pieces I really like and what I may not um, aspire to do or be. Right. And so you're able to, you know, even with folks that you may have worked with in your life that you may not 100% like their style or appreciate of kind of where they're coming from, what I tell folks is, is take from that what is important for you stylistically, what you would implement that's positive and what you would implement that maybe um, is not so positive. And so I've had a number of influencers, good and bad, um, and hopefully not taking on the bad stuff um, in my career and, and a good handful, and I won't name them. Um, book? You can name a book. I could name a book. There's a lot of, you know, I, I love Gladwell. Um, I'm trying to remember his first name right now, and it's not coming to me. Okay. Um, and I just picked up his last book, and it's about, um, and I'm forgetting the title too, but it's about um, not judging people. Um, when you don't know what their story is at the end of the day. And that's what it's about. I love it. You yeah. know, it's one of the things I share with so many. We can analyze, uh, analyze and criticize and everything, but it's very hard for us to judge someone unless we know them. We know about them, who they are and everything. So when people say, but you're judging me, it's like, I can't judge you because I don't know you. But I can analyze and compare sure. and distract to see if I fit in or you fit into my mold or I fit into your mold. So it's like comparison versus judgment. Right. So that, that's, that's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so I'm, I'm just starting uh, that book that's still not coming to mind in terms, but it's look okay. it up. Gladwell is the, is the author. Okay. Um, that's the last name. Um, you know, uh, much of the readings of, of Khalil Gibran, I have loved. The poet is one of my favorites. It's, you know, the pages have become so thin because mm. they're often, you know, times that you I'm read like, it in English or Farsi? English. Okay. English, uh, Farsi, I read maybe at a second grade level. Maybe. <laughs> and so it's, it's good to be multilingual. Yeah. Multilingual. Yes. So it's, it's way too difficult for me to read it. But you do speak it. I speak it fluently and I speak Armenian fluently. Yes. And so, yeah. So that, that would be a book. And then of course, I will tell you, and I'd be remiss, my mom and my dad and my grandmother, mm. all for very different reasons, have had a significant influence on my life in a very positive manner. Um, it, the pillars. Positive. Yeah, absolutely. The pillars of, of the the family, um, small family be it, but the pillars of the family. Absolutely, absolutely. So we're almost at the end. May I see if there's any questions for oh, us? Yes. Okay, let's see. Is there is any, live. thank you both ladies, Mark Scott. Thank you, Mark. You're always one of my biggest fans. Thank you for being here. Uh, if you have any questions, for, thank you for all of you being here. If there is any question, if that you would like to ask Yasmin, by all means, go ahead, type it, let us know, <laughs> being here live. I hope this conversation was beneficial to you. Oh, one more thing. Sure. Uh, the voting system is changing in the entire LA area, right? Or is sure. it California? Or is well, it national? I don't know. <laughs> I don't even know exactly where, but it's but the voting in California. Yes. Okay, California. California. So where and we go polling and all that. No more polling locations, they're voting centers. And so um, through the LA County, we don't run the election any longer here locally. Okay. As you all know, election day is March 3rd. Which However, it used to be April. Now correct. it's March 3rd. Now it's March primary election. Okay. Um, and it used to be odd years, right. but now it's even years. Okay. Primary election, March 3rd this year. However, you can vote up to 10 days prior to March. Third, Starts February 22nd. Second, February okay. 22nd through March 3rd. There are voting centers here in Glendale that will be open for four days, for 11 days. Let's say you work um, in another city and you leave the city of Glendale in the morning and you go to, I have no Anaheim. idea, Anaheim. Um, you can go to a voting center in Anaheim and you can let them know what your name is and they will ask you certain information. Guess what? They're going to pull I up. Address. They're going to pull up your um, ballot for the city of Glendale and you'll oh, be able wow. to vote appropriately there and, and submit it there. 
Um, How do we find those places? The vo voting, voting location? Place. So um, Los Angeles County has a website and it's lavote.org, I believe. The okay. city of Glendale has our own website, which is Glendale centric in terms of where all the voting locations are, et cetera. Glendale. And that's um, glendalevotes.org. Glendalevotes.org. And there's videos that we've uploaded in terms of how to's because they're all machines. Um, oh. And it's, and it's, there's people to help us. There's people to help. Okay. Vote by mail is still the same way. So if somebody is an absentee, oh, voter, absentee voter, you don't have still, to still do the same thing. That'll still, you'll still get it. Are the ballots mailed? They're mailed. Okay. If you're an absentee voter. Oh, because I'm not. That's, that's why right. I'm like, yes. Was so, it mailed? Yeah, it's mailed. Then it comes to your home. You fill it out okay. and you send it in, or you or you drop it off. Beautiful. So it's supposed they to be more it easy. accessible at the end of the day. It is the first time you know, um, that we're all kind of embarking upon this. The important part, I think, for folks to remember is that um, the balance, uh, of, depending on the um, number of folks who are within a category, you have to make sure that you press the more button um, on the machine versus the skip button. Because if you don't press the more button and you press the skip button, you go to another to category. Next page. Okay. No, not next page, next oh, category. category. But if you hit more, then you go to the next page and finish up kind of within that category. But let's say you make a mistake. At the end, it prints it out for you. You look at your ballot and you're like, oh no, I didn't vote appropriately. You can change it. You put it, you, you make the changes, and then it prints another one for you before you actually How many it. times can you change your mind? I'm not sure. Good question. I think maybe three. It's not changing your mind. You may have made a mistake. Oh. So you may have voted for one and you could have voted for three. You may have voted for four, and you were only supposed to vote for three. Got it. So it all depends. So you, it does not reject. Uh, it doesn't re it, until you put it in. Once okay. you put it in, it's in. Then you're done. But it yes. Uh, but it's supposed to be very helpful. There's going to be folks from the county there to help wow. individuals. Um, again, the embarking on new territories. They went through a whole testing process for a couple of years. The county did through the state of California. We'll see. It should be interesting. Nice. Yeah. Nice. That's right. So at times as this, that we have come to the end, I usually close with one thing. Please complete the sentence. Oh boy. Should yes. you tell me this? I know. <laughs> Yasmin is grateful. Oh, grateful. Thank you. I am grateful for you to take time away from your busy schedule. Uh, sometimes this lady is the most gracious giver that most people don't realize. You know, talk about giving. I saw something that I know it's forethought everybody's mind, Kobe and everybody else who just uh, in the plane crash. But there was a beautiful saying that he had, and it said, Invest in your people. Don't give. Mm. Don't that. just give. Invest yeah. in them. So with that, thank you thank for you. investing, carving out half an hour of your day to be here, to be with our viewers, and they can always find you at City Office, the City of Glendale, managing this beautiful jewel city of ours. And with that, thank you for being a part of Real Talk with Lisa. God bless you and may the universal light surround you at all times. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you. Wonderful. Wonderful, wonderful. Bye-bye. That's it. <laughs> we ended right here. And we ended right here. Bye-bye.